So it's relatively calm out here right now. This is from an injury earlier today when I thought I could uh, use a sharp pruning shears to cut back some flowers and not pay attention and then I sliced up with my finger, so that's fun. But uh, what I wanted to do was a brief tour of the perennial garden in the front and some thoughts about that. So provided the weather and the children and all other elements cooperate, I will do that. I'm sweaty and dirty and yucky and I feel like the videos that I've made thus far have all of my same like five outfits in them. And if that seems to be the case, you are absolutely correct. That is indeed the five outfits that I rotate through while in my home week. <laughs> so I'll flip around now and go through a little bit of the perennial garden. This is more of the perennial garden. So it's not in its ideal season of bloom right now, but there is quite a bit of bloom to it still. All of this we did either by digging up by hand or we did rent a sod lifter for two different years and took up large portions here. But if I close in here, again, close to the house, I have some Shiso perilla, which is more of a tea plant and that actually has seeded itself prolifically. I have some pineapple sage. I have some Joe pie weed that I really cut back because it was too much for close to the window. I have some lavender, some mint, some thyme, some hyssop there. Lemon bee balm, here we come over to more thyme and uh, oregano over here. So a lot of edibles that I like having right outside of the door because that allows me to just come out and get them. If we follow along here, this is the walking path here that leads over to that first garden or that backyard garden that I gave a tour of before. So this area here is one of the reasons why I wanted to do a video about it was inspired by some recent conversations I've had about imperfection in the garden. And I would deem this to be vastly imperfect. So I would consider this to be a mess and something that I need to really revamp and work on, and I will. That's the front of it. If we scan out along the other end of this path here, if I basically turn, then we have this other end. I added this side this year, so in an attempt to mirror what's going on the first side, I have chives or allium hyssop and we've got geranium some coneflower perennial sunflower some more of that shiso or perilla coming in here a lot more chives that self-seeded some lamium back there I have phlox that are getting ready to bloom annual bee balm some yarrow borage that seeded everywhere some more thyme, some blanket flower, borage, thyme, hyssop, the pattern kind of continues. And I'll walk over here. So if we walk down this front path here, there's kind of a repeating pattern of the same family of plants. We've got that yarrow, some sage there, going up into coneflower, some lilies, some joe pie weed, some sunflower, Lots of mint along the path. That was a fun lesson. I just put some black plastic down here because this was basically crabgrass growing up and I want to try and kill that and not work too hard to dig it up. So that's my, that's my answer for that. Some amaranth that's seeded itself here and I let it be. Some marshmallow there. And then I have this huge space here of mulch, which has black plastic underneath, which is my version of solarization because I am working with what I have. So we had black plastic and I got the mulch to cover it up. I know solarization is ideally with a clear plastic, but I did not want to invest more money. And this at least offers some semblance of cover while it's killing all the grass. 
I started out building this area here by digging it up with a shovel earlier in the season and that just proved to be uh, more work than I was willing to undertake to dig up the whole area. So as I progress further with what I want, my ideal is to mirror what is this back garden that is very overly full for me and needs to be divided. Mirror that by dividing it and putting it on this side out into this area this fall or next spring. If I pan over to this area, there's that is a honeycrisp apple tree. We have some peonies that are done blooming in front of that. We've got some bee balm, some more perennial sunflower. In the front here, there's yellow primrose that's done blooming. There is catmint that's done blooming for the season. We've got more hyssop up there, more yarrow, geranium, iris. more yarrow. Hollyhocks, those are fun. I planted those once and then they've self-seeded throughout the entire space. So I let those do what they want for the year. Some salvia and blazing star and phlox in there. I hear we come up on the Nanking cherry and the black currant. The black currant was that video that I did before. So that's where this particular bush is established in the garden. We'll come around the back here. Russian sage. I planted butternut squash in these two planters. This is again an area where I put a bunch of black tarp down this year and then I put mulch on because I want to expand the garden here next year. And that was my way of doing that. Decreasing my mowing space immediately so I didn't have to mow there for the rest of the year, but also not applying any manual labor to dig up the grass there because that seemed like a lot of work. So I put black tarp down and I put mulch down and I dug holes when I purchased those black raspberries. But they are, the one's doing really well and the one is not. So we'll see how that goes, if that survives into the next season. I've got a strawberry patch here that I wanna replant so it's in a better area. I've got some blackberry lilies there that are really cool that I want to get transplanted into other areas. We have some ladies mantle coming up on some tiger lilies here and more coneflower, more blazing star, some sedum, some more allium. Here's more once we get onto this path here. This is the path leading up then back to where we were. This is the physostagia and some geranium, some hens and chicks, which I think are really beautiful and fun, although they're being taken over by chives for the moment. Mint, mint everywhere, mint all the places forever. Here's some ground cover thyme. There's some more blanket flower, geranium, coreopsis, bee balm, sedum, catmint, kind of a mishmash everywhere. But here's what I did today. These are my tools, kind of, sort of. Those are just things laying on the ground. This giant wheelbarrow full of mostly borage and mint, which I thought would be a hilarious name for a blog of some sort, mostly borage and mint. What do you grow in your yard? Mostly borage and mint, because <laughs> that's the thing that I am Forever and always pulling up in my yard is mostly borage and mint. So this area back here, I did weed quite a bit today and I took out quite a bit of borage and mint and decided that that was done. And I was not going to let that flourish in my yard anymore. But I think the thing that I most wanted to share in this brief tour was the lessons that I'm learning. I had, I've made some new friends recently in the neighborhood and one of them expressed seeing my yard and having some disappointment with what was her space. And I can relate to that so, so, so obsessively much, like nothing is ever good enough and nothing ever works. And when I do something, it's always something that I should have done differently. And I actually went to my other new friend's place today and saw her place and was really inspired at the cleanliness and the order and that there were paths that delineated different things. And I know in my perennial garden, there's not, and I want that. But I also 
saw where I am growing. And so instead of that being something where I came home and just looked at my own space and said, oh my gosh, I hate it, forget it. I'm gonna let it all go to, just go to weed and go to seed and I don't even care anymore. I came home and was so inspired. I pulled up, like you saw, a wheelbarrow of mint and borage and I looked at what I had and was so thankful for what I had and, and started envisioning. I see a lot of gardening is like a, a blank canvas, like my yard is a canvas and I see that there's an end result of a of a, an art piece that I see, but I can't, it takes time to get there. It doesn't get there in a year. And so I had this vision of where I wanted to move lilies and I wanted all the daylilies in one spot because some of them have beautiful blooms and some of them have things that I really, I'd want them to be up by my house so I can see them bloom. And, and I want my edibles in a certain area, but I want to be able to see mulch and delineate them. And borage and mint are something that I planted not knowing they would take over everything and threaten my very will to live. Well, I can't eradicate that and I don't want to spread a bunch of like, weed killer on them. So I will pull them. And when I get a whole wheelbarrow full, I will feel accomplished for the day. And it was as though I saw this fresh canvas to be able to kind of repaint. And it just was so life-giving and inspirational instead of suffocating that I thought this is a perfect time to get a video of just a tour of the front yard garden. Every year I've dug up more yard and planted more. 95% of it has been gifted to me, which is wonderful. I'm in the process of learning in the moment what the growing habits are for that plant, how it grows, how it spreads, how it blooms, because I was given it and threw it in the ground. So now I feel like I have this template for how I want to change things and move things, and I feel very inspired about that. So I wanted to share that. I want to last show you some close-ups of some beautiful lilies that are blooming because my hope is to have them all kind of clustered in an area by my front door where I can see them when they bloom and have these different colors of blooms of the lilies as they bloom. One of the deficits I have to giving a tour like this is that I don't know the common names of the different variations of lilies, but this is one that I just think is really beautiful that crimson with the yellow in the middle. These tiger lilies are beautiful. They're taller and they are almost done blooming, but they're just wonderful. I had some really tall lilies that were blooming in this area earlier that I wanna get moved to a better spot. Those are done. This is another really pretty one, kind of a mauve-ish with yellow in the center. It's fun because sometimes I'll find frogs sitting in here in the morning I love that they open every day you get a new one, thus the name Daylily. But this is not in its ideal spot, so I'd like to move that closer to my house as well. And this is another really pretty, just bright red. We'll pull off these spent ones and then everything will look perfect, won't it? We'll just, yep, like they never existed. This is a really pretty bright red one with that yellow center. I wanna get that up closer to my house to be able to see it. It's very, I, I, I realize the growth that the garden is giving me that instead of feeling overwhelmed or depressed or like, forget it, this isn't gonna work. I'm instead just like, yep, I'm inspired. I'm gonna dig you up and move you next to my front door. And every year after that, it's gonna be just better and better. This is, look at that one. I wanna get that one up by my house too. This beautiful like lemon chiffon yellow. And all these were given to me. They were gifted to me by a generous friend that shared her lilies. So I'm gonna get all these dug up and organized so I can just see this bloom of different colored lilies out my front door. I'm gonna do it in the fall so that I can see that next year.